Hello fellow Cosmonites, this brief episode is prompted by a question from the previous open question time episode. I've decided that while I'll answer some questions in a kind of lump form, there are several questions that are so interesting that they warrant brief podcast episodes on their own. And this is the first of them. Could we introduce large endangered mammals to other parts of the world and save them by Tim Morris? So Tim asks, what effect do you think rewilding would have on the future post-human biome if it's implemented before mankind goes extinct? By this, I mean the proposal of elephants in Australia and rhinos in North America, etc. to replace extinct glossotiers or diprotodonts. Okay, a lot to unpack in this brief question and very delicious, by the way. Thanks, Tim. So, before our current age, when people kind of came about themselves and evolved into homo sapiens as we knew it. There used to be a lot of large bodied animals in many continents. I mean, these are like elephants or mammoths in Eurasia, but also a lot of other weird things such as diprotodonts, which are these giant hippo sized wombat like creatures that lived and filled the niche of large grazers in Australia. Now, all of these animals are now extinct and the finger points decidedly at the naked ape ourselves for driving them extinct. It's an awful loss and I'm sure the world was a far more rich and vibrant place before we came to the scene. But Tim asks, relating to these certain rewilding episodes, these rewilding efforts. So, you know, we've killed off the most megafauna in other continents and now the last ones in Africa are signaling in the danger zone. Elephants and rhinos are getting severely endangered in their habitats. And there are certain projects, believe it or not, to save these animals, especially rhinoceroses, by introducing them to safer, more developed countries. And the really geniuses behind this Australian rhino project have decided, rightfully in my opinion, to introduce the endangered rhinoceros to the Australian outback. It's like a land without people for a people without a land kind of thing. Because rhinos are so endangered that they're not even safe in the, in zoos. A couple of months ago there was this incident where thieves broke into a zoo in France, killed the rhino, took the horns and escaped. And this happened in Europe, France, if I'm not mistaken. So you see, it's a huge problem and you can't really protect the animals from this because money is pushing on the other side. These uh, hordes of important, stupid men in uh, mainly in Asia, but also in other countries, also in uh, Arabia, I think demand rhinoceros horn for potency increasing medicines and also for handles for traditional daggers. I think it's a really one of the vainest and most bloody forms of trade there is. But when there's a will, there's a way. And the people be with the willpower have a lot of money to spare, you know, places like China and Arabia and all these things you know a dagger with a rhino horn handle or like some fancy erection inducing medicine these are all demanded by 
the most pugnacious, wealthiest and driven members of their societies, you know. So they can't really stop poaching in Africa. I mean, if there are guardians, they can bribe them or they can actually give money to mercenaries who will fight with the guardians. And there are some really despicable practices like they poison all the vultures so that the game wardens can't see the poachers or they can't see the kill site so it's a lot of the least ethical trade there is i think so the long story short uh, there's a lot of money riding on one hand of this pressure equation and it's winning slightly so the people at the Australian Rhino Project have decided to create a safe haven for rhinos in Australia. And this is what Tim Morris means by rewilding, you know. And I think it's a really great effort. Elephants are a different story because they are actually extremely active destroyers and plowers of the land. I mean, elephants can do some damage to the Australian ecology but rhinos seem safer I think in fact if someone started farming like I don't know 2000 rhinos in Australia they could even sustainably farm the horn satiating the demand for drugs and mementos on one hand making money and keeping the species alive so personally i'm all for turning australia into a giant rhinoceros reserve elephants once again i'm not so sure perhaps this could be tried in a few other places that's for example cyprus the island of cyprus in the mediterranean it's a developed country and the climate is not too different from certain parts of Africa and maybe there could be a rescue population of elephants there but once again elephants are extremely smart and somewhat destructive animals they're not like these placid grazers that you can see in the backgrounds of National Geographic documentaries they're actually a force of nature and whenever they come in contact with people they create problems inevitably you know it doesn't have to be bad rogue elephants or people who want to kill elephants whatever but these two species don't do well together believe me so it's a bit of a bigger pickle in the proboscidean part of this question but anyways imagine this was done and humanity went extinct for some reason by the way that's a big if i think there's a lot of doom in the air these days climate change global warming wars population increase these certain ground shaking technologies on the verge of breaking you know they all contribute to a very apocalyptic feel these days but i don't deny that great changes are about to come but uh, as a species people are harder to kill so that's a big if but let's for the purposes imagine that there are australia and rhinoceros species now and people go extinct what would happen easy there will be australian rhinos how would they evolve now that's another interesting question because they have no big predators where they are they could the humble dingo the australian wild dog introduced by people coincidentally could evolve into a kind of bear dog kind of big burly like something like the wargs in the lord of the rings you know that sort of predator to deal with the rhinos and the rhinos themselves, I could see them evolving. Now, Australia is a lower 
energy ecosystem than Africa. So I think if left to their own, Australian rhinos would evolve somewhat smaller, leaner, perhaps even more cretinous looking varieties. And those in turn would be preyed upon by really big dingoes. So that's my answer. What do you think, dear listeners? Uh, which other animals do you think we could save in other parts of the world? Elephants in Cyprus? You take your guess. And how would they evolve in the future? Please comment, like and subscribe. And this is the end of this brief episode. Well, you know what? This is actually not the end of this episode because I realize that I've just committed a case of uh, conceptual overlap. So Tim was asking more in the lines of rewilding itself. And I was more focused on Australian rhinos because, well, that's the most big and splendid form of rewilding there is. But just before really saying goodbye, let's clarify rewilding for a second. Rewilding is not just the introduction of big animals to different habitats to preserve them. Rewilding is more of a European and, and a British and North American thing in these days, where they take up this... Imagine there's like a river delta that's been destroyed by industry in the past decades. Well, now there's no longer any industry. They first left to China and then disappeared altogether. So people are trying to reclaim these habitats and return them into their old form as natural parks or rivers or deltas or forest or whatever they are. So rewilding is a more comprehensive act in which people try to introduce every member of the ecosystem back to that place. So ecosystems have different niches, you know, let's take the river delta example again, that you would need water birds or some things to graze on some kind of food or whatever. So people are trying to reintroduce these species from different locations in the same continent or in rare cases from faraway places. And with rewilding defined thus, you know, it's far more than just rhinos in Australia. You get uh, more diversity in more places, but this is not species diversity. A lot of niche species are extinct. By this, I mean, imagine completely hypothetically, you are England, okay? You're going to rewild 10 swamps around the country. And 100 years ago, 200 years ago, there used to be, let's say, eastern swamp bird in one swamp, western swamp bird in another plant, another place. But then with the age of industry, they all got extinct. Now, there are still swamp birds or whatever they are in a more generalized form in other places. So people take them up and reintroduce them and rebuild these habitats. So you have more diversity in those habitats, but the animals are not different species. They are stock species, the most resilient reintroduced to similar habitats across the globe. Now, going back to Tim's question. So if this happens, you know, at first you're going to have Mac habitats, like McDonald's kind of one size fits all solutions in swamps, grasslands, prairies, whatever. Uh, ecologists will come up with a certain set of actors that work. These will be reintroduced and the earth will lie fallow, you know. After that, supposing that people disappear somehow, these habitats will slowly begin to differentiate themselves. 
so once again you will get more species i think it's gonna be a good thing you know whether people disappear or not and i already told you that people are not likely to disappear rewilding is gonna be a good thing that will make this planet more diverse and with more robust ecosystems